All right, everybody, welcome to today's show, the Successfully Unemployed Show. I am super excited that you're here with us where we learn how to become successfully unemployed. Basically, ordinary people just like us becoming extraordinary, finding a way to not work for somebody else to provide for a family, making money outside through side hustles, through businesses, through investing and all that sort of stuff. And today, I brought on somebody who has created a business and he and his wife now work in the business and they make money from their business. So, Kalen, thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate you being here. Absolutely, Dustin. Happy to be here. Uh, as soon as I heard your name for your podcast, I had to be on it. Awesome, Kelly. That's awesome. I really appreciate for it. Sure. Yeah, I love the idea of being successfully unemployed because that's something that most people don't think. Like, well, you're unemployed and you're happy about it? Like, yes, because I have <laughs> other ways to do it. Now, let's jump right into it. You and I are just normal, normal human beings, normal people, normal guys that you'd be like your next door neighbor. But how did you or how do you provide for your family without working a J-O-B, a just over broke job? Yeah, I love that. Uh, well, so me and my wife run the SavvyCouple.com. It's a personal finance blog and we help families organize their life, simplify their finances and find the freedom to do more things they love. So we make money through our blog, through providing content and helping our readers go from surviving to thriving with their uh, personal finance. Well, that is, that's great. I love that idea. And uh, finance is something that's dear and dear to my heart. I'm a very, very frugal. I'm not saying that finance is frugal, but I'm a very frugal person. So I always have money going through my brain. Now, I want to jump back and look at how you are a normal, ordinary person, but become extraordinary by having a, a way to make money for your family. So what were you doing before when you had a job, a job, when you had a just over broke job, what were you doing before? And talk us about that process of now from there getting to be where you are today. Sure. So I graduated college in 2012. And from there, I jumped around to a bunch of different jobs. I uh, worked as insurance salesman. I was a UPS driver. Um, I was an office manager. And then I finally landed my thought was dream job in law enforcement as a jail deputy, um, eventually moving to road patrol. So I did that for two and a half years. Um, and about the year mark, I realized that law enforcement was not for me. Um, I hated having commitment to other people, having them tell me when I had to come into work, forced overtime, just terrible work environment, never getting to see my wife because she was working an opposite shift as a teacher. So it was a really difficult time for us. It was our first year of marriage as well. So that even added on to it. Um, so it was really difficult that first year. And we finally got to the point where we sat down. We were like, this is not what we envisioned our life to be like. Um, so we sat at the table and we hashed it out for a couple hours, kind of planning out what we want our life to look like a couple years from now and the steps we needed to take to get there. Um, and that was kind of like the turning point for me to realize and wake up that law enforcement is not for me. And I have to figure out a way to start making my own money on my own terms. And so working as I could absolutely see working as a deputy is is especially in the jail. I mean, being a deputy is great. I used to work at the sheriff's office in Fresno, California. So oh, awesome. yeah, I wasn't actually a deputy or an officer. I was working in the IT, but I got mm -hmm. to be around everybody that I, I loved working. There was a great, great place to work, but they had officers in the jail and deputies out in the field. So there's a little differentiation, but I could, I had to go in the jail all the time, you know, setting up computers, doing whatever. It was horrible. I would never Ever, I don't have that personality to be locked inside of a jail with other people, and that's it's so horrible. I, I, I just I could see why after a year you're like this is not for me for sure. And, and I think you hit the nail on the head. It's kind of like doing time with the inmates. Um, so you're like there literally doing time. And I, uh, I just got to the point where I looked at myself and I'm like, I do not want to do this for 25 years of my life. I need to do something different. That's great. Now let's jump into what did you do? Like, what is your business, and how does your business? actually pro provide for you and your family? Sure. So we're a personal finance blog and we started it as a kind of a passion project. We saw other bloggers making money online. And this has always been something that we've, we've really loved to budget our money and live frugally and live on less than what we earn and just be in charge of our life with our money. So we, we did it as a passion project, started it. Um, and slowly over time, we kind of started making money through ad revenue, through affiliate marketing. Um, and around that, so the first nine months we didn't make any money and it was just, like I said, a passion project we kind of grew it and just worked on it day and night on the weekends. And then finally on that ninth mark, ninth month mark, we finally made money. And that was just like the wake up of like, okay, we can do this. And I went to Brit, my wife, Brittany, two months or two weeks later and asked her if I could quit my job to do this full time. So that's when I kind of quit, um, reduced all of our, um, risk in doing so. And then kind of jumped on it full time. My goodness. So after nine months, you quit your job? 
Yeah. So I, I, so I quit, I quit as a jail deputy and I went to work as an office manager and that was like a part-time job just to get out of that environment. My wife finally landed a full-time teaching job. So I needed to find something and, you know, kind of regain who the heck I was. I, I lost my identity leaving the brotherhood of law enforcement. Um, so worked there. And while I was working at the office uh, manager job, I was also working on our, our blog. And finally, after the nine months, we started making money with it. Um, and that whole time we were saving up our money, budgeting and knowing that eventually I was going to have an exit strategy to do that full time. Uh, that's fantastic. Yeah. When you are, are sitting behind a desk, you have, you can do things like this where you, you know, maybe may have a little extra 20 minutes for lunch or whatever it might be. You may be still a couple of minutes when you're supposed to be working to, to check on something or do something. But if you're working as a, as a deputy or an officer, somebody in the jail, you literally can't do any of that stuff. You're hundred percent occupied. So that's great. And so you took that as a way to get you, get your end goal of having a business, an online business, it was a step. So you made a sacrifice and then you jumped into something to provide for your family as you, as you needed to, and then kept rolling it into. So I think that's, that's terrific. Now, when did you start the, the site and it's the savvy couple.com, correct? Correct. Is it, does it have TH like the savvy couple or is it just yeah, savvy couple? T H E S A V V Y couple.com. Awesome. When did you start that? And uh, so what year did, was that when you started it? Uh, we started the summer of July, 2016. Um, and my wife was kind of getting bored being home all, the, all day from the summer and we wanted to do something together. So we we're like, all right, let's try to start the, a business or a side hustle that we can do online. Um, and it was at the same point, I went back to school to be a home inspector and it was another opportunity to leave a normal job and work for myself. Um, and I was all licensed to do that, got my paperwork all ready to go. And we finally made the decision to do an online business, which thank God we did that. Um, way more freedom. So yeah, that's kind of how that happened. So it was in 2017 that you quit your job? Uh, so I quit my job. Yeah, it would have been October 2017. Got it. Man, that's exciting. And then you also took that other job to kind of get a stop gap to provide money, which is, I think is brilliant. I, we, as, uh, especially as dads, like as fathers, we need to provide for our family. And so that's a responsibility we have to take. So I absolutely commend you for that. There's some people that can just literally up and quit and not have a, uh, something else. I just couldn't do that. So I invest in real estate. I invest in rental properties. I have 30 plus properties. They make me lots and lots of money every single month. And you know, doing this podcast is just for fun. And so when I quit my job when I was 37 years old, I literally didn't work and money came in because the properties worked for me. But you did it knowing that you had to get something else. Like you had to start building a business. So absolutely commend you for that. Now, if somebody were to get started, they said, you know what? I really like what Kellen's done. I really want to help somebody. Let's say I want to help somebody. I want to be like the next Martha Stewart where I have a website where I am, you know, teaching somebody how to decorate or not in the finance market or it could be in the finance market. If they want to teach online or help people online, what would you say? What's the first step we should do? I think the first step is figuring out what you're passionate about because at the end of the day, it's going to take you a while to get started and actually making money from your side hustle. So figuring out what you're super passionate about and you're willing to work on and serve people just because you love doing it. Um, and then from there, it's figuring out there's like three mediums and platforms to kind of serve an audience. You have audio, like a podcast, you have video like YouTube or uh, text, like a blog. So figuring out which three of those type of platforms you feel the most comfortable serving your audience with and, and making content on and uh, kind of just the biggest thing is getting started. I think a lot of people get caught up in having to make it perfect and, and putting up a business model and all that stuff. And me and Brittany really just like went for it and we're like, all right, we're starting it. And then we learned as we went um, because I think taking actions way more important than sitting back and making a really in-depth perfect plan. I agree. I love the idea of not waiting till it's perfect. That's something I, I'm not a perfectionist by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, my wife would say, no, he's not a perfectionist. But I like to make sure things are done right. You know, I, I don't mm -hmm. like it when it's done wrong because then you definitely have to go back and fix it. My dad taught me, if you're going to do it, do it right and do it right the first time. And so I've always had that, you know, in my brain. So I love that idea. So I love the idea of also being able to help people. Talk to us a, bit, a little bit about now with finances, a lot of people are drowning in debt. They have this, that, you know, whatever it might be, they're just not doing well. Talk to us about how you are also on top of making money, but you're also helping people. Yeah. So we finally got to the point where we started making our own products. So a lot of people struggle with just sitting down with their spouse, talking about money and putting it on pen and paper. Um, and that's kind of how me and Brittany started doing finances in college is sitting down with each other with pen and paper and writing out, okay, this is how much money we have coming in. This is how much money we can spend. And this is how much money we have to go to other places. 
So we, we've created printables to help people budget their money, pay off debt. Um, we just came out with a meal planner printable. So it's just making it super easy so that people can take those baby steps to make good habits and make those changes in their life. I love that idea because you're just, you're really giving things that work for you to give them to other people. So that's a great idea. Now, once we say we have an idea, we know what we want to do, we're going to get started. I now buy domain name, I get WordPress, I start, start do, um, I have the site set up. What is, after everything's you know set up, it looks okay, what do we do next? Start creating a lot of content. So uh, the first like year we started publishing three articles a week, we would have a guest post on Wednesdays. Um, and this was like religiously three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So we had tons of articles going out and we kind of used the shotgun method of let's produce as much content as possible. That's quality content, it's not just garbage. Um, see what sticks with an audience and see what people can relate to and then use our story to kind of push that forward. And so when you say the shotgun effect, obviously you're getting lots and lots of content out there. See, when I first started Master Passive Income, my first brand, when I started that, I think it was the end of 2015 into 2016. And I would just put out an article once a week because I was like, man, this is so much work writing an article. I, I was like, I don't have to do it. I don't have to do this, but so let me just go ahead and do it. And I didn't know that... At, what, what, I was, what I was doing was I was putting out an article once a week and then I started, you know, I'm just gonna do it once a month because nobody's really reading it. And so I just thought it was because people eventually find my site and they wanna go back and eventually read the next article and read the next article, but that's not necessarily the case. Is that correct? Correct. So a lot of times, I think the, the rate is like 80% of people that visit your site will never come back again, something crazy like that. It might even be higher. Um, so your email list is a big important factor of that. You want to give people an opt-in that they can get onto your email list. And that's really where the magic happens and where the money's made. Um, so we have an email list of over 20,000 people now that we love and serve and pour our heart and soul into and act and treat them like a best friend or family member that we're trying to help them through this transition in their life um, from surviving to thriving. So we really put a lot of focus on the email list. That's great. So let's look at the content. Now, how do we know what content to write about or get other people to help write? How do we know what to write about? Uh, the, so going back to your passion, so what do you feel comfortable talking about? What do people always ask you about? Um, friends and family, if, if you're always the person that's saving money and like can keep your grocery bill really low, so teach other people that, write an article on that. Um, and I've always found it super helpful. Go to Google and type in some of the terms or keywords that you would look for yourself or that you have expertise in and see the articles that are ranking um, so you can get an idea and get inspired to create your own type of content. That's a great idea. I love typing in Google. Like if there's something that I want to write about, I literally um, write, I type in like, what is this? And I see what other people are searching for and or what is, and then figure out, okay, if Google's suggesting that, it probably means other people are searching for it. Like it, it's not gonna give you something that's so obscure that nobody's searching for. It's gonna say, you're probably like other people that have the same idea. So. In order to then, you have an idea. Okay, I'm gonna start writing about, I know my niche, I know what I'm going after, um, and I start writing content. How often would you suggest we would write, we should write content to get more SEO, your search engine optimization? How often should we post? Um, I think the first year of blogging, it's really important to get as much quality content as possible. I think doing three articles a week was overkill for us, um, but that's kind of what we committed to doing and finally realized it's not really, meaningful and we don't need to do that. So if you can publish one really good quality content um, piece of article each week, I think that's plenty enough to uh, start building that tribe and building that traffic. So what can, what basically, what is a quality article? What's quality content? What does it look like? Um, I would say it's a article that serves a purpose. So people are coming to your blog or to your website to solve some of their problems in their life. So every article should have a purpose and it's helping your readers solve a problem. So that would be in-depth article. Usually it's over a thousand words and it's answering as many questions to that one problem that they have um, and giving them a solution to it. That could be your own products, that could be affiliate products, but giving them a solution to their problems. So do you add like images or GIFs or GIFs or anything like that to make it like, make it more attractive or it, what, what else should we do to the actual article? Yeah, I think uh, it's important to make sure that you hit the, the headline on the head um, and you want to make sure that that's like a very good click worthy headline. And the, the formula that we use is curiosity plus value equals clicks. So if you can make someone curious and also show that you're going to provide value, they're going to click on your article. Yeah, featured image is obviously very important as well. And then from there, you want to have a lot of H2 headers. So it's like nice big headers that's easy to read with lots of white space um, and make it interactive. So ask questions. Um, write like you're talking to a friend and keep it interactive with images, like you said. Okay, got it. That is, that's great. Now, 
let's look at, now we know in a blog or in a website, we can monetize it through advertising, through product sales, through, um, let's see, uh, affiliates. We, we There's many different ways that we can make money. Now, what is your favorite way or what's the best way that you found to make money from your site? So we've kind of started, a lot of bloggers start with ads and that's what we started with. We were writing a lot of Pinterest worthy articles to get that traffic up and get onto Mediavine to get display ad revenue. Um, then we moved to affiliate marketing and last year, this was our biggest year, um, we focus a lot on sponsorships and that's really my favorite way to make money with our blog and our business um, is partnering with companies that we already know and love and use and having them be in, uh, use our platform to get them in front of our audience and get our audience to start using them. Is that different than affiliate, the sponsorship? Yeah, so sponsorship is kind of like a one-off marketing campaign that you would write a, a direct post just for them. Um, or it could be Facebook ads, it could be social media amplification, email marketing. But it's basically putting a marketing campaign for that company um, and kind of working with them one-on-one. -on -one. So two questions come up. Number one, how do you find those companies? Do they reach out to you? And number two, how do you know how much to charge? Great question. Uh, so the way you find them is I like to either, there's a bunch of different sponsorship networks that you can apply to and join. Um, if you just type in a sponsorship networks or blogging sponsorship networks, they'll come up. I also have an article on the FinCon um, website that has all the ones that we are part of, but you kind of apply to those, make sure that you connect all your social media accounts, your analytics so that companies know what you're all about and uh, the traffic you're getting. Um, and then another way is go onto other blogs that are in your niche and type in sponsorships in their search bar and see who they're sponsoring ship with. So that's going to give you exactly who is looking for sponsorships and who, what companies are actually spending money with bloggers to make money. That's interesting. So I, I love that hack too. I like, like little, that tip that is a pro tip, like go to your, whoever is doing this, something similar to you and see what's actually going on there. Cause you could find, I, I, I love that idea. And here's a thought that uh, very similar. So I invest in rental properties. So I have 30 plus properties. That's where I make my money. I love it. And I teach people also how to buy properties, how to quit their job by investing in real estate. And one hack that I give everybody, very, very similar to you, is people say, well, how do I get good deals? How do I find good properties to buy? And I said, well, a great way is to find wholesalers. Wholesalers, you know, they, they basically find a seller and a buyer and they put them together and they make a little bit of money and you get a good deal. But people say, how do I find a wholesaler? And I say, okay, you got to realize what wholesalers are trying to do. They are the ones that put those bandit signs on like the the um, uh, on phone poles or everywhere. Like it says, I buy houses cash for, you know, fast or in Craigslist. Those are wholesalers. Call them up and say, I'm a buyer. Put me on your list. So that's another hack. Like just like you, I love that idea is go to where they are already going or being or doing. Connect with them there. So I love that idea. Exactly. So yeah. how much do you charge? Uh, Not yeah, you specifically, sure that... but like what what should we charge and how should we plan the charging? Sure. So another pro tip that I've used, um, instead of having a price sheet or a spitting out a price to these companies, it's just like a negotiation at a garage sale. You want to make sure that you hold your cards close to you and ask them what their budget is. So when I'm working with a brand, I always get them to speak first and tell them, tell me how much money they have to work with us. And then I'll put together a nice proposal and a package to kind of go forward with that. Now, do you go to that top dollar? Like they say, well, we have we have three hundred dollars on an on an article or marketing. Okay, it's three hundred dollars. Do you do that or what do you do? I do that very often, and oftentimes I'll go above what their budget asks for and just make it look very enticing to them. So that's that's actually, I mean, on a couple sponsorships that we've had, that's added thousands of dollars onto our revenue that we've gotten from them. So it's really important to ask what their budget is and not just spit out some numbers. That's fantastic. Now, I, I'm just one person in my business. So master passive income, successful unemployed. Um, I have plenty of other businesses, but it's just me because I don't need to do this. I make my money in real estate. I just have fun. But big companies, they do have a budget. I being one person, when somebody asks me, what's your budget? I'm like, I'm not telling you my, but I'm, I'm not stingy, <laughs> but I'm frugal. Like I, I keep my cards close to my chest too. For sure. So when somebody asks me, I just put a dollar. This is my budget. You tell me or something like that. But what I love is that big companies, they have a budget and they don't care. It's not their money. You know, it's like, okay, this is this is our budget. This is what we can afford. Now they might say, you know, they might know that it's a thousand dollars and they might put 500 knowing they can, you know, move around, but it's great. You just ask the question and they'll say yes or no and give the answer. But I love, I'm a personally, I love negotiating. Absolutely. So do I. Love, oh, awesome. It's <laughs> like, the God, best. I knew we'd get along. Absolutely. My <laughs> wife hates it. She literally yep. hates 
negotiating, but it's one of the funnest things for me to do. And so that's just part of the process is, you know, you say, here's my, if you want somebody to come up, you start higher and then they work way up or vice versa. You start lower and you work your way up and they come down. So love that idea. Now, as we're building our business, how do we scale? How do we, okay, we have the site. We are writing articles. We're getting some ad revenue. We have a couple people that are like affiliates are working. We have maybe one sponsor. How do we then scale to where we can quit our job? So a big thing that we did was most of the money, I think the first entire year, we didn't take a cent out of the business. We just kept the money invested back in the business so that we could um, focus on paying for tools, focus on paying freelance writers, all that stuff, um, and just invest that money back in our business. And then even from there, I started only taking $1,000 a month from the business for the next six months or seven months. Um, and we really didn't start taking a lot of money from the business after the second year when we were actually making over 10, 10K a month. Um, so it's it's sp- staying frugal, treating it like a business and making sure that you are investing money back into it. Now, how would you, because I love that, but the question comes to my mind, what are we investing that money for? Like how do, okay, I, I write articles. And I, okay, I can get a freelancer. That, I, I can understand that. I can get a freelancer. What other ways do, uh, would we need to spend money, invest in the business to make it better? Uh, so a big thing is outsourcing. Uh, our time is our biggest enemy as business owners. As just we're humans. We're going to die eventually. So getting as much time back in your life is important. Um, so we're huge on the Eisenhower chart, um, which has four quadrants. And you kind of put lay out what your day looks like and make sure that you're focusing on your urgent, important tasks, um, your high ROI tasks. And for me, it's focusing on sponsorships. I know that if I can get sponsorships, I can make a crazy hourly rate um, for my income. So if I can outsource the things that are taking up the most of my time with a, with a VA or someone from our audience, we usually hire within our audience um, so that that person's within our business and knowing our business the best as much as we do. Um, and that's really helped us get more time back into our life so that we can focus on the high things to continue to grow that uh, business. That's great. Well, along with the newsletter, because I love the idea of getting somebody on your newsletter because you're contacting them. The email, I, I live by my email. It's almost like a love language of mine is my email. <laughs> I love getting emails because it's just like, oh, I have something to do or I'm a to-do person. So whenever I go for a run and I think of, man, I got to do something, I literally send myself an email. Now. So do I. Yeah, awesome. There we go. <laughs> right we come along, Kelly. Yeah. So, when we are looking at utilizing um, our emails, when we're looking at how we can um, then scale our business, we want to then look for opportunities. And you talk about, and you you like really go after sponsorships. Do sponsorships, do they detract at all from your message or is it okay? So you have to be very cautious on who you're working with. I think that's big. And when we were first starting, uh, I can say honestly that we probably would have said yes to anyone because we wanted to make money. Uh, but now as we're getting further along and we have money built up and if I were to redo it again, I would only work with companies that I truly believe in and know that can serve our audience and help solve their problems. So I think it's being really picky on who you work with so that it's still on brand with what you guys are going after and what brand you're building. So with Master Passive Income, I get that all the time. Hey, do you accept sponsored posts? And I'm like, no, that's just it. But it very well, there are some companies that I love, like I would literally do it for free because they're fantastic companies and they'll serve my audience. Now, Thinking of the audience and with the newsletter, do you do anything else outside of the newsletter? Do you have like a Facebook community? Do you have like a membership? Like what else do you have to help engage with your community? Sure. So we have a Facebook group called Family Finance Freedom. Um, and we are in there quite often posting articles, posting, going Facebook Live, um, and just answering questions that people have about their family and finance freedom. Um, we also have a blogging group, Blogging with Purpose, that uh, we're in quite a bit as well. And we help bloggers make money online and start their blog. So yeah, we have we have our email list and then our our two uh, Facebook communities. With your email list, do you have any funnels or anything that like gets people into eventually buying into something that you have? Yeah, so we have a couple core opt-ins. Um, one of them is our budgeting template, and that is a funnel into our budgeting binder. So we'll have an eight-day sequence that we provide a lot of value up front, and then we finally ask for the sale um, and have it at a really discounted low rate to give those people an opportunity to get that product in their hand and start budgeting their money. That's great. What is the future for your company? Uh, So this year, we're focusing a lot on continuing to build digital products that help our readers just get organized and get their finances simplified. Um, And long term, me and Brittany definitely want to create a couples retreat called the Savvy Couple Retreat um, and do it locally um, and host different sites around the country kind of and do a marriage retreat weekend type of thing. So that's our long term goal. 
That's terrific. Have you thought about taking people off of Facebook and creating a membership or charge 10 bucks a month, 15 bucks a month or something like that? Yeah, we've definitely thought about it. Um, I think that's a business model that it works really well. It's fixed income, just like rental properties, which is awesome. Um, so definitely want to build out that eventually as well. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So I'll give you a quick story of my brother. So my brother teaches people how to play poker online. He loves poker. He teaches people how to do it. So he has a podcast called the Smart Pack, uh, Smart uh, Poker Study Podcast. And he was actually doing Patreon. Have you heard of Patreon? Yep. So Patreon, yeah. So basically it's a volunteer. Like, I like you. Let me give you money. Well, he was only making two or $300 a month, but he had a good amount of people giving like $5 here, $5 there. I said, you know what you should do? You should actually make a a membership site where people are actually paying you money because with Patreon, you still have to produce content. You still like, if, to, if you give this dollar amount, I'm going to give you this, an extra podcast um, a month. If you give this dollar amount, I'll give you a downloadable. Like every single month he had to produce this stuff. And what was happening was he was making two or $300, but you got to realize that he's still producing content. And in realizing what people in Patreon, they're realizing that I like this guy, I'm going to give him money. That's out of the goodness of their heart. Not everybody's like that, but people will pay a premium for your private content. They're saying, instead of, hey, give me money for free just for what I'm doing because you're nice. No, now he switched it. So instead of making $200 a month, he created a membership platform and it's a premium to be in there. You get all these great things just for being there monthly. And instead of charging or being, you know, just a giving model, he's now charging, I think, $25 a month. He's making over like two or three thousand dollars a month. And That's he just awesome. started a couple months ago. So it's just like it was fantastic. They would switch from two hundred dollars yeah. a month to now a couple, two or three thousand dollars. So that that might be might be a great model for you. I mean, even if it's if you have like 300 people on there that are paying you 10 bucks a month, that's a $3,000. I mean, that's not, yep. it's not going to break the bank for people. So I, I love that idea. Now, so Kellen, I want to jump into the rapid fire round. You ready? You got it. Awesome. So the rapid fire round, we talk uh, big, broader questions, but you should be able to answer them pretty quick. The first question is with being able to quit, we're not working in the jail, sucking our life away with um, forced overtime and all that sort of stuff. We have a, hopefully a little extra time to give back. How are you making the world a better place? You're, you're the uh, people around you, your community, how are you giving back? So we're part of a bunch of different groups at our church. And also um, with Facebook, we have a buy nothing group. So we're donating a lot of stuff on a regular basis, um, given to our church. And we really wanna, this year we've gone and we've gotten past the point of surviving to thriving ourselves. So we wanna really focus on doing that for our audience um, locally and um, online. That's great. I love that. Uh, next question. What would you tell somebody that says, I want to be like Kellen. I want to get started. How uh, give us a succinct, maybe a few steps to get started. Do this. Sure. Number one, sit down and really purposely write out what you want your life to look like. So what do you want to do when you wake up in the morning? What do you want your life to look like each hour of the day? Really write down detail of what you want your life to look like. I think that's the most important thing you can do because then you have a goal that you're shooting towards and you're not just spraying all over the place. Um, second is don't overthink it and get started. So once you have your goal and you know what you need to do to get started, just get started. Um, taking action far outweighs being perfect. Um, and that's going to continue to drive that progress forward. Um, and then the, the third thing is be persistent. Um, I knew that when we started our blog and I decided that we were going to, I was going to do this full time is no matter what, if it took five years, 10 years, this is what I want my life to look like. And I was going to make sure that I made it happen. I, I think it's fantastic because there's no time in the history of the world. Can anybody get started with a business and in two or three, or maybe at most four years, be able to provide for themselves through a business that they've created. So I love that. Now, if you were to go back and give your 13 year old self any advice, what would it be? Start a blog. So but back when I was 13, my dad showed me eBay and we started selling stuff on eBay together. Um, and I absolutely loved it. It's kind of what, uh, I didn't have to get a job in high school or college because that's what I did full time is eBay and Amazon selling. Um, but I also knew about blogging way back then and I totally blew it off and said, that's stupid, blah, blah, blah. So back, if I was 13 years old, again, I would tell myself to focus on blogging for sure. That's awesome. And now, obviously, well, when I was 13 years old, there was no such thing as internet and no such thing as blogging. But now, absolutely, I'm telling my kids to get started. In fact, I even own, I have four kids. You can see them in the background if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, 
I even bought each one of their own do domain names. So Elias Heiner and Elizabeth Heiner, I bought their domain names because wow. it's only 10 bucks a year. Who knows if they're ever going to use it? And so I have it for them, just like I bought Dustin Heiner back like 15 years ago. I, I, don't, I, just, I don't use it very often or at all. But anyways, I love that idea and I'm teaching my kids how to blog. So I encourage you absolutely to do that as well. So the next sure. question is, what tools or apps, or it could be a journal, like what would you recommend we should use in our lives to make our lives better, become successfully unemployed? So the big thing I love is whiteboard. I have three in my office and I just love to go and brain dump and be able to erase and just uh, write down my tasks they want to do each day. I think a whiteboard is really important, especially for someone with ADHD that needs to get stuff on paper or else they forget it. Um, and other than that, anything that you can purchase or invest money into, if it gives you positive ROI in your time and it gives you your time back in your life that you can use in other areas, that's always going to be a good investment to make. That's great. Yeah. Nobody said whiteboard yet. So I love that idea. I love having a whiteboard and writing everything down. So there's something different about typing it out as opposed to writing it down. Like, I think that's something that we're, our, the younger generation is starting to lose is it's just something about your brain and how it is effective when you write as opposed to type. So right. awesome. I love that. Now, the last question is, what is one nonfiction book that it could be business, it could be life, marriage, whatever, that you would suggest that everybody read? Uh, so the book that changed my life is Work Less, Make More by James Shikarno. Uh, I believe that's how you say his last name. Um, it, it was all about the Eisenhower chart and focusing on increasing your EHR, which is your effective hourly rate. Um, so no matter what you do, if, if you can increase your hourly rate from $20 an hour to $100 an hour, you're going to have so much more time in your life. You're going to be making more money and have more freedom. So uh, yeah, that's definitely the book I recommend to everybody. Fantastic. What was it called again? Work less, make more. Work less, make more. I love that. I create automatic businesses from now on. There's no way I'm going to be working in and uh, where either I have a, a job where I'm working an hour, getting paid for an hour, or I'm working in a business where I work one hour and I get paid for that hour. There's no way I'm going to do that. So Oh, man, Kellen, thank you so much for being on the show. You've been giving us so much great wisdom. How can somebody, if they want to reach out to you and find you and get a hold of you? Uh, so we're on every social media platform, pretty much uh, The Savvy Couple. Um, and you can join our Facebook group, Family Finance Freedom, or you can send us an email, SavvyKleins at gmail.com. We'd love to help you out any way we can. Awesome. Well, Kellen, thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate your time and all the wisdom you gave us. You bet, Dustin. Thanks. All right, man. Take care.